All right, so welcome to my second video in this particular series of product videos. We're doing art rollers and I am going to do some jelly printing. So this has been sped up four times. I can tell you the basics of my jelly printing process, but everyone's is a little bit different. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's, I, I have a jelly plate. This is a jelly art jelly printing plate. It's the eight by 10. I am printing on some cardstock and I print with two main types of paint. I print with Amsterdam acrylics and I paint with, or I print with Dina Wakely acrylics by Ranger Inc. These are my two favorites. Everybody does something different. Everybody, like some people like more fluid paint, some people, some people like thicker paints, some people print with inks, there's, there's all kinds of things. These are the two paints that I like, the two brands, and then any color inside those brands. For this one, um, I am sticking with like a kind of off-white, almost eggshell color. It's kind of like tight and buff, but um, a little creamier than that, I would say. And I have this beautiful sort of like blush or rose color. I have gold and I have a couple grays. So I have a warm gray. They're both warm grays, but I have a dark warm gray and then sort of like a medium range warm gray. And I'm going to go back and forth between printing some solid pieces, printing with stencils, and then I'm also going to use my rollers. So when it comes to the stencils, I lay the paint down and then the stencil and then the paper. And I'm printing on a cardstock. I love to print on cardstock. It's the thinner brand, um, thinner version, like maybe like a 65 pound. And I pick my cardstock up at Michael's, but you could, whatever you have, whatever you want to print on. A lot of people print on deli paper. You can print on tags, all kinds of things. So I'm going back and forth between the colors and I'm printing with stencils. That was a, a Donna Downey stencil there that you saw. And then I'm using these art rollers. So I, the, I'm using the art rollers to pick paint up out of paint that I've already laid down. So I put down some dots of paint and then I use a brayer to spread it out nice and thin. And then I'm using the paint rollers. I'm just rolling it. I keep calling them paint rollers, the art rollers. I'm rolling them directly across the paint and it picks up the paint and leaves a void. So it's really, really cool. It's a totally cool technique. Um, it's just one more way to kind of expand your jelly printing. So I'm not, I'm, I'm just going to keep jelly printing here, kind of going back and forth. I don't, I like a lot of white space. And so I don't cover each page the whole way, but you can see that some of my pages overlap. I do end up with some very linear based jelly prints, but I love it because that's the stuff that I am drawn to personally. I am not that great at um, like more organic type stuff, but I have seen some really beautiful organic jelly printing. So Basically, this is how I don't, I don't know what to say. I'm I'm just I'm just like <laughs> everyone's is so different. Jelly printing is such a, a crazy process. We all follow the same steps, but because of like subtle differences, like which paints you use and what tools you use to make marks and how you print and how you layer your colors, everybody's printing comes out so different and it's really, really cool. So if you ever get a chance, I would highly suggest kind of just kicking back and searching people's jelly printing and see what kind of prints they have. I've seen a lot of really cool blog posts where people just share like some of their jelly printing um, pieces at the end. And when it comes to jelly printing, I really like to jelly print when I just need to do some art and like whatever's happening, my brain is fried or I have too much going on and I just need to zone out a minute or very quickly turns into an hour or two. I love to jelly print. And the reason is because I don't have to think that much about it and kind of just have fun and see what happens. But in the end, then I have all these beautiful papers I can use as tags. I can cut them up for collage. I can tear them. I can, you know, put them in whatever. They make great ATC backgrounds, all kinds of things like that. So then at the end, after I was done jelly printing, I sold the, that one is one of my favorites. I can't wait to use the one that I put to the right. But the one that I put to the left is the one that I'm using in this project. So it's really, really beautiful. And these are all the cool jelly prints I have. They all turned out awesome. But this one has the pink, the gold, and the gray, and then a very, very, very subtle pattern from that art roller. See that? See how cool that is? It's really cool. And then the gold has a little bit of shimmer in it, and then the paint's next. Oh, it's so cool. It's so, so cool. 
And this ends up being a really easy canvas. Because I showed you how I used the rollers and jelly printing, now I'm just gonna mount this piece of paper to um, my little canvas. So I put the canvas on top of the page where I wanted the, the specific colors to come through, and then I traced around it. I very specifically left a large border. I didn't like angle the pencil. I put the pencil flat against the canvas so that it created where the, the body of the pencil, so that where the lead drew, it was away from the edge so that I have room to trim it up and sand it at the end. Now I'm gonna take some golden heavy gel medium mat and I'm going to spread it out in the thin, in the most even layer that I can. I almost said the thinnest. It's not the thinnest because I want there to be really good adhesion. And the way that's gonna work is that the gel medium stays wet. So if I put it on too thin, it will dry too quickly. But I just put it on there like fairly thin, but even, and so it was still cloudy. Then that way I know it's wet because when it's dry, then gel medium is clear. So then I flipped it back over and using a scraper. Now this is a ranger scraper, but you could use like a bone folder. You could use um, a T-square. You could use a ruler. You could use a credit card, anything you have. You're going to flatten out this piece. So you're going to start in the middle and then you work your way to the edges and make sure that there's really great adhesion the whole way across and then you let that dry. And it's not gonna take super long if you didn't make your gel medium super thick, but you need it thick enough where it wasn't dry when you put the paper on. So then I was trying to cut it with an X-Acto knife and be all perfect and prim and proper and it did not work because that's not the kind of artist that I am. Things do not work like I think they will for me and that's okay because I'm finding ways around it. What I did off camera, I just trimmed it up with a pair of scissors because you didn't need to sit, see me sit there and fumble with that. So I cut it with scissors and then I came back with a piece of sandpaper and I sanded it all the way around. And that's it for this one. So jelly printing, super awesome with the art rollers. They're very cool. There's lots of different textures in these art rollers. This one I think is the stucco one, but they, they're very cool. And there's lots of them, lots of them. So definitely check them out. Um, check out what the other artists are doing. Check out the other videos from this series. I have five videos using these art rollers. This is number two. And then check out my other series that I just did for Donna Downey, uh, the Cray Paws. So the Oil Pastels by Secura of America. Feel free to find me if you're watching this somewhere other than my YouTube channel. Find me, subscribe to me, and I look very forward to seeing you again.